Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler, and today we are doing a review of the Concept Cryo. This is their budget version, uh, the D2. So before we kind of get into that, just want to say this is my first video from my new little setup in my room. It's pretty exciting. Uh, give me some feedback on it. I know the lighting's a little bit different. The sound may be different. Um, yeah, so we're just going to take it from there and hope that this all works out. We'll tweak it as we go. Into the review of the Concept Cryo, though. I have some other knives that I wanted to review first until I started using this knife, until I started carrying this knife, until I started just falling in love with this freaking knife. Um, so, real quick, this is a D2 steel. This is a drop point blade with a little bit of recurve to it. Uh, this is a flipper, but it does have, you can spidey flick it. You can thumb flick it, but I don't thumb flick things anymore, so apparently I'm bad at that. Obviously, the flipper tab works just fine. So, it has a liner lock, stainless steel liner lock here. These liners are not milled out, but they are recessed within the knife, which is pretty nice. Gives it a nice little sleek profile. It is not ambidextrous. I just looked it up online and it said it was, but I'm looking here and there is nothing there. So, this is a right hand only. So this is a titanium milled pocket clip, which is nice, even though I don't like the way this pocket clip looks. But, you know, take that for what you will. So the action on this guy, pretty darn awesome. I did adjust it, but that's just because that's what we do. There's no other reason to adjust it. Uh, this does have a big brother knife. This is, uh, it's like titanium frame lock with S35, I believe, for 190 bucks. This knife is coming in at 58 Again, pretty awesome. The it has a carbon fiber version as well. That is 68, which is 10 bucks more. And then there's a micarta version, which I believe is around the same price, maybe in the middle of those two. Um, and then last but not least, we have this recurve here. I talked about that a little bit already. It didn't really talk about it, just mentioned it. Uh, I'll talk about that in the end. I just wanted to make sure that was in there. All right, so let's go into some spec eh, specs. Then we will go into some size comparisons like usual. I'll kind of go into my likes, my dislikes, my overview, and we'll talk a little bit about this knife. So overall length on this knife from tip to tip is about eight inches and about eight and one eighth inch, plus or minus a little bit. The overall length on the blade is three and a half inches. The overall cutting edge is just that three and a half inches as well. Let's do the weight on this guy here. I probably should have used a different background because this knife's black. It's just disappearing on it, but whatever. So the overall weight on this guy, a little bit beefier, coming in at 4.29 ounces. Not a huge deal. Been carrying it. Don't hate that weight at all. Um, and what you're getting in this, uh, you know, it's it's worth it's worth carrying. 4.2, 5 ounces. Suck it up, buttercups. All right. So the blade stock thickness is 130 thousandths. The behind the edge thickness is coming in right at... Looking at about 20 thousandths. So the overall width on this guy is coming in at exactly half an inch, which is pretty damn good. Let's see the height in your pocket, excluding the flipper tab. About 1.3, 1.4 inches high. It's kind of average. That To put that into perspective, just so you guys can see, the Manix 2, at its highest point, is coming in at 1.73. So this is, you know, a, almost half an inch less than the Manix 2, and that makes sense. It, it carries pretty easy. It carries pretty sleek. Um, let's do your hardware check. The pivot is a T10. This is this part gets kind of goofy. The pivot's a T10. Hold on, did I have a brain fart earlier? No. The pivot's a T10. The body screws are a T8, but the freaking pocket clip screws are a T6. Not a huge deal, but you need three different bits to take it apart. That kind of irritates me a little bit, but whatever. Let's go into your size comparisons. Let's grab our. Feldspar and then our mini Feldspar. 
Obviously, this knife is a little bit longer than both of these, much longer than the mini, and barely longer than the regular size feldspar. Since I've got them here, we will go with the Spyderco Astute, the Spyderco Manix 2. The Manix 2 is just about the same size if it wasn't for the way, actually it's just about the same size. All right, now let's go with our Ontario Rats. Our Rat Model 1 coming in at a little bit longer, but it's it's negligible. And then our Rat Model 2. All right, and last but not least, I'm going to show this guy off a little bit more because I got something special on the way. Our Dogma. And our Savivi Elementum. This knife is a little bit longer, a little bit larger than the Dogma, much larger than the Savivi Elementum. This has a drop point blade with a slight recurve. Kind of annoying because it adds just a hint of annoyance when you're sharpening it. Not a big deal. This is on ceramic ball bearings, have a very nice action. Um, I love this. The action on this is just great. So, especially for a $58 knife, it rivals that of Civivi. It, it's just, it's fantastic. The carry profile is great. The pocket clip, not so great. And they slapped titanium on it. I wish they would have just did stainless steel deep carry and just knocked off another five bucks. But, you know, that seems to be a thing nowadays. I, I don't get into the cheap knives with the titanium pocket clip. It just, it doesn't do much for me. We got these really nice black standoffs back here. It's got a recessed liner that is not milled out. Doesn't appear to have a lanyard hole anywhere, which is kind of cool. You know, you're not emphasizing shit with the lanyard hole. You can spotty flick it, thumb roll it, thumb flick it, uh, light switch it, whatever you want to do. See if I can fail it. I can fail it, but not, not a huge deal. Um, I'm not putting any effort into the flipping of this knife at all. Ergonomics. The ergonomics of this knife, you are absolutely locked in. It doesn't force your hand into one place. One complaint. This has a feeling right here with this finger cut out and plus this thumb ramp here where I've wanted to choke up. I've caught myself grabbing this here and this is just a sharpening choil. A really nice sharpening choil. But it's just a sharpening toil. Don't chuck up, choke up. You will slice your shit. So, but the ergonomics in hand are fantastic. The fidget factor is damn near through the charts for a $58 knife. The blade is a great length. With this recurve, it does add a little bit of, in theory, uh, usefulness. A little bit more length to the blade. Kind of looks cool. It just, I know it's going to irritate me to sharpen. Um, and then the price on this guy, 58 bucks for, what are you getting for 58? You're getting G10, D2, recessed liners, a titanium pocket clip, stainless steel liners, ceramic ball bearings, great fidget factor, great ergonomics, uh, fantastic. You know, what don't I like about this? <laughs> the pocket clip. I think the pocket clip is just kind of dumb. Looking. I feel like I'm paying an extra five or 10 bucks on this for that titanium pocket clip, which I don't think I really need. And it looks I don't know. It looks goofy. You know, not really a dislike, but what else would I choose to have on this? I really wish this had a little bit of contouring on the scales. I'm kind of getting over this flat scale thing, but that's just a preference. It has nothing to do with this knife. This knife looks great. It feels great. In hand is great. In pocket is great. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not a huge deal. I did. I do wish this had a little bit of contouring. Maybe the micarta gets there. I'm not sure. There's a micarta version, like I mentioned. And then, you know, I... This likewise, again, I'm not a huge fan of this recurve, but not a huge deal, and it's very slight. It won't really add too much of an issue. Fit and finish of this guy. Friggin' awesome. No issues whatsoever. Blade play? Uh, the pivot's been coming a little loose on me, uh, just because I fidget with this nonstop, but there is no up and down blade play. Side to side, you can tighten it up. Yeah, I can do that right now. We will tighten it up to where there's no side to side. And then I'll show you the action on it. So no blade play side to side. The action, 
just as good. Friggin' awesome. The centering, see if we can see this because it's the black on black. The centering is deceiving. It every time I look at it, I'm like, what am I looking at? But it's it's dead center. It's once again fantastic. Can you touch it from the end? Nope. You barely miss it. The clearance there is perfect. What do I want if I could have it? I wish I had a finger choil on this guy just because I wish I had a finger choil on every knife. And I wish I had a deep carry pocket clip. Other than that, there is no other wants for this knife. Last but not least, let us bring out the QSP Copperhead. Why am I bringing this out? Well, A, the blade lengths are the exact same, if not a little bit more with the concept. But B, guys, I'm going to have a budget knife of the year after everything I've, I've gotten so far. And this Concept Cryo is going up for my budget knife of the year right now. The QSP Copperhead, same price range. This guy's right there with them. I love both of these knives. These knives are freaking awesome. Just wanted to show its competitor right now. I tried to think of what did I get this year that came out this year that I would... And I don't know that the Copperhead came out this year. i got to look that up. But what would I compare against this for a budget knife of the year? The QSP Copperhead comes to mind and nothing else. You know, my criteria being under 100 bucks. that's basically it. I don't think of anything else that I've touched this year that came out this year that really goes up for budget knife of the year other than also the Civivi Dogma. This was King Civivi. I'm pretty sure this came out in 2020. Just a fantastic knife. Uh, but, man, those three so far are my budget knives of the year. There will be a budget knife of the year video. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked for it. I want to do it right now, but I got to freaking wait till the end of the year. That's about it, guys. Nothing more to say. There's not much bad about this knife. The pocket clip's a little goofy. Not really a huge fan of the recurve. Everything else is fantastic. The ergonomics are great. Wish I had a finger choil. Not a make or break. The D2 steel is awesome. The price point at 58 bucks is awesome. The G10, the recessed pocket or the recessed liners, uh, everything. There is no hot spots when you're gripping and bearing down, and you can you can bear down on this knife with the way that the ergonomics are. So the Concept Cryo, I'm gonna call it Concept Concept, whatever you want to call it. The Concept Cryo, I love this knife so much that I want to buy the titanium version now. I like I want it. That's how much I love this knife. It is fantastic. That's all I got to say, guys. I highly recommend this knife. My name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp. Stay safe. Have a great freaking day. Thanks for watching.